Hello, I'm Tony Gale. This isn't a trick tip video at all. Um, yeah, the weather's been really bad lately. Really bad. And things have been incredibly busy. But I do have something quite exciting to talk about. We're going to talk about this. This thing. It's quite cool. Um, so this, this is the new deck from Moonshine. It is the Kill Your Idols. Um, if you don't understand the reference, uh, go look up who Steve Rocco was. <laughs> Try to get a viewpoint from anyone who wasn't an early 90s street skater and you might understand why. Why this is a thing. Um, but this is really exciting for me as a skateboarder because as I've probably mentioned on here before, I really like single kicks. I don't use them as my main board, but there's something just beautiful about them. They're really fun to skate. Having a flat nose opens up a lot of options. And previous to this, the only moonshine single kick that we had was the Dan Garb. But the Dan Garb is quite a big board. It's almost 29 inches long. It's uh, 7.6 inches wide. It's quite sizable. And I've been saying to Adam, the boss man at Moonshine for a long time, we need a smaller single kick. Because not everyone wants to ride a big boat. Um, and more importantly, this will fit with the vast array of freestyle trucks available. Because this is seven and a quarter wide, it is 27 and a half inches long. I want to say that's right. So it's actually fairly close to this thing. They are very, very similar in terms of length and shape. But there's a lot of things I really hate about this board. So we improved on it with this one. First of all, the nose is actually usable. This one has a decent length nose, which means you can do caspers on it and it feels comfortable. It's also got a little bit more taper on the nose shape, just a little bit. And at the other end, the tail is a little bit more rounded, just a bit. And that means hopefully you should rail flip a bit easier. But you know the absolute winning thing? Sorry Vita, didn't mean to attack you there. Um, it sits solidly in rail. It's a straight rail. Whereas the Rocco, not the Rocco, the, uh, the Mullen, <laughs> um, has this curved rail thing going on. And I hate that. It feels really nasty. To me, that feels like a deck that's worn out straight out the gate. So I've always thought this was a bloody terrible board. But now, this is available for half the price. And hopefully, it should skate a lot better. So today, I'm going to set this one up because for the first time in what seems like weeks, today is going to be a bit rainy, but tomorrow, actual dry weather ah, and Sunday as well. It's going to be good. I'm going to set this up today. Might get a bit of a skate in, maybe, if it doesn't rain within the next five minutes. But this weekend, I'm going to see what this thing can really do. So I need to pick out some parts. So I've been thinking about this for a while and I have option paralysis now because now I'm running offset I have so much stock here and so many options and so many things to play around with. Now my first thought was let's use some film trucks because that's what I've been using on my personal rider for quite a while um, and I think I've said on this channel before I really love the film trucks they are incredible they're a European brand uh, they're out of France they're really strong, they turn beautifully, but I don't think that's what I want to go for on this setup because I've got a couple of other options. I spent all of last year using full tracks. Uh, these actually have film bushings in, weirdly, don't know why. Um, and full tracks are great trucks, they're really solid, they, they have a very stable turn, they feel good, but they're perhaps a little bit too low for the sort of ride that I'm looking for. Now, luckily, I also have some of these to hand. Uh, these are Paris 109s, the uh, street geometry, obviously. Paris are more known for their longboard trucks. I've never used a set, and I've had these set aside for quite a while. Now, the UK distributor has none of these left. In fact, I don't think they've ever bought them into the UK. So I've put in a special 
request. So hopefully these will be stocked on the Offset website soon. So I think I should probably see how they actually skate. There's a lot of really nice things about these trucks. First of all, they are incredibly tall, which works quite well for freestyle because it makes it much more stable to land in rail. They also have a giant kingpin. Now that's quite nice because it means I get to use taller bushings. So these are the Cairo 98A. I've gone for the K-Back 2. I think that's the taller of the options. And basically more urethane means more stability. If you go for softer bushings, it means you get more rebound, more return to center. If you go for harder bushings, it means there's more resistance. So these should be the perfect truck for stationary freestyle, which is one of the things that single kicks are good for. You also have this nice tall block here, very solid space, which is good for landing on if you're doing truck tricks. So I'm very excited to try these out. So they're going on. Um, Wheel-wise, I don't know, I've got two options. As I've said before, big fan of the Seismic Focus 95A. Very soft, very smooth, but Yo-Yo gave me these uh, roller bones while I was out in Germany. These are much harder than I would like. These are 101 mil, uh, sorry, 101A. They're also 57 mil, so they're a little bit taller. And they're very skinny. I've never used roller bones. Um, I'm skeptical of a wheel that's that hard, especially in England, but I'm willing to give them a go. And then last but not least on the undercarriage, you've got to think about bearings. Now these came in from my bearing sponsor, they came in from Synopsis. We've got ceramics and we've got Blu-rays. So these are the high end super fast. These are the lower end, but still really solid bearings. Now I'm thinking of going for the Blu-rays because I don't really want this to be a fast setup. But the nice thing about Synopsis is the detail that they put in. If I open this box up, you can see that inside you have an assortment of different bits. You have everything you could possibly need. You have not just the bearings, but you have bearing spacers, you have the washers, you have some bearing lubricant, and you have spare axle nuts. And I like that a lot. But we've picked out everything we can do in here, so it's time to go over to the storeroom and get all the other little bits. Let's go. Um, the first thing we need is grip tape though, and I can see some down here. The regular Jessup is downstairs at the workbench, but this is quite special and quite new. This is 4D, it's uh, an English brand actually, a new one. They do very spangly grip tapes, very, uh, very shiny. Let me try and change the focus a little here, maybe that'll do. Um, but me being me, I'm gonna be quite boring. I'm gonna go with the regular black stuff. It's very grippy, it's very good, big fan of that. So that's going in. Uh, the next thing we need is skid plates. Luckily they're all kept right here. This is the assortment of regular ones that I use on my normal deck. We need some tails. I think that's the one that we need for the regular. I think that's, yeah, that's the tail for the Kiwi Riders, I think. And I need a nose, which is in here. So we're gonna go with one of them. So a matching pair of white skids, that's lovely. What else do I need? Let's have a look. I need hardware, that's in this very dark corner, so yeah, you don't care about bolts anyway. Do I need risers? Do I need these amazing spreaders? Probably not, because the Paris trucks are very tall, so. All right, I'm gonna pick some bolts out and take this all downstairs. Right, okay, looks like we've got all our bits. So let's clear out some space because we've got to do grip tape first. I'm gonna go there somewhere. I hope I can make this look interesting in the edit because I don't know, when you've gripped as many boards as I have, this all seems pretty mundane, but if you've never seen someone grip a board before, this is how you do it. 4D grip is perforated. It's a bit like mob, only, you know, it doesn't peel away from your board in five minutes. Make sure I make it to both ends and then just flatten it out gradually. Little pro tip, these bits where the kicktail begins, they're a little bit awkward to file. So if you take a knife blade to them, just cut those diagonals, it folds easier and now you can file it. Um, unfortunately, my file's really worn out, so this is gonna take a while. I will fast forward or skip past this bit. 
Really should have bought a new file. Right, if that file wasn't knackered before, it is now. Okay, but what you can hopefully see, filed the whole way around. Basically filed through until I can see the base layer. Get your cutting knife out. Got to have your cutter. Stab it up from the underside and just slice along. One thing I will say about 4D, slice is really nice. It just feels pleasing. Didn't even cut myself in the gut this time. Now the next bit, which is really important, get one of these off-cut bits and you're just going to file down the edge. Try and make sure it sticks a bit better. Because if you leave that edge too sharp, it'll snag and it'll peel up. Okay, here's a freestyle specific tip. This grip tape right now is going to be super abrasive. All grip tape is. So, break it in before you skate it. Bit of grip tape on the fingers. Oh, that is a horrible noise. Yeah, oh God, right, enough of that. If you plan on doing a lot of finger flips, just get another little clean bit. Just file down the ends, smooth it out, so you're not gonna totally shred your hands on it. Okay, next bit, we've gotta do skids. You're gonna need coffee for that. Pow, and by the magic of editing, I have coffee. Right, skid plates, that's the next job, so. This is a relatively long process that I won't bore you with entirely. What I will say is a long time ago, I did a video about how to put skid plates on. That's about a 20 minute long video filmed with an iPhone on the floor of my old apartment. Or flat, you know, if you are English. So uh, yeah, I'll put a link to that. Go watch that because this takes a while. Um, blue tack though, that's, that's my secret tip. Use blue tack and an assortment of different drill bits. And uh, yeah, skid plates. I'll see you in a moment when this is all done. Okay, that's the time consuming bit done. We've done the most boring part, we've got the skid plates on. Very important part, but it is still quite dull to do. So now we get to turn this into an actual skateboard and that's gonna be nice. First thing, we'll put the trucks and bearings and wheels into one unit, so. Going for the roller bones, I'm gonna get these out. I'm gonna break my own rule here because you're always supposed to use spacers. Whenever you put a freestyle board together, use bearings with spacers. But these, because they're roller skate wheels, they don't actually fit. So, I have to go without the spacers and hope I don't blow the bearings apart. It's not ideal. Uh, if anyone wants to donate me some roller skate spacers, That'd be nice. Now the other thing is that because of the fact they are so skinny, I'm probably going to need a lot of washers and I just hope I've got enough. In case you missed this in the, uh, the video on the 95A Focus, never push bearings in with your hands. Never do that because you end up damaging them. Put them on the axle, slide the wheel on and then push it together as a unit. There we go, thunk. Yeah, I might need more washes on that. That is very... Hmm. Let's have a look. Let's put an axle nut on. See how close we get. You know, I reckon we can put two more behind each wheel. So let's do that. Right, so I've had to put four extra washes behind that wheel. It's not ideal. These wheels had better be worth it, because that is disgusting. I can see myself swapping straight back to size mix after one session on these. In which case, I might have some cheap roller bones if anyone wants them. <laughs> yeah, that isn't sitting right. This is the other problem, because they're not cored. You've got to hope that the bushing, uh, the bearing seats are right. They don't feel good. Bones, eh? High quality. Lovely. Same again on the other side then, please. Yay, right, so, undercarriage done. Now we need some bolts. I said upstairs that I wasn't gonna use risers, but I caved. I don't like putting truck directly on the wood if I can help it, so. All right, moment of truth. Yeah, that'll do the job lovely. Let's get some nuts on. Here it is, 
is complete. My very, very 80s setup is now done. Um, there's still a couple of tweaks that I need to do. I'll talk about those later. I'm not going to do those on film because, yeah, they're pointless little personal changes. But, as I said, this is the most 80s board possible. Single kick, no concave at all, very tall, very tall wheels. I mean, they are very similar to what people were using in the 80s and the early 2000s when wheels were hard to come by. Which means this thing is going to sit in rail all day long. It's going to be fun to skate this. It's going to be very unlike my other board and I'm looking forward to it. Also, because of the purple Kairos, these trucks are going to be stiff. It's going to be an alien thing to me, this, but I'm excited to give it a go. However, it's not going to happen tonight now, is it? Let me show you outside. England. So, it was a very rainy night, but we're here, my favourite covered spot. Um, there's a few little wet patches, but it's going to be alright. And we get to test out the new Kill Your Idols. Full disclosure, didn't even ride it here. I rode my usual pro model setup because softer wheels, looser trucks. It has been a long time since I've ridden something this firm and this hard. So this is going to be really weird for me. Now, after I turned off the camera last night, had something to eat, had a bit to drink, made a couple of extra modifications. So, first thing I did was I did put grip tape nose and tail. I only needed a little bit because I want to have the stickers in there. But I also put wood screws on the top side of the tail. Um, that's very important because British surfaces will destroy boards. Now, convention dictates I should probably have some on the nose to protect the grip tape, but I don't like the feel of the wood screws under my thumb when I do finger flips. So I'm basically just gonna have to try and save this end, not Casper slide into things, not Casper spin on this end. It's not really the way you're supposed to use a single kick, but that'll have to do for me. But yeah, let's give this a go and see, uh, see how it feels. Tony, I hear you cry. I can't do normal tricks on one of these boards. It's got no concave. What's a normal trick? Oh, an ollie flip, obviously. <laughs> Works fine. They were invented on a board like this. They're not that hard. Holly stuff. Really not that hard, even on a single kit. But I will give you this. 
Nollies on a flat nose are very weird. <laughs> that feels so strange. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. The gloves are literally coming off. Let's do some real flips. So at this point, I'm pretty much done. I've filmed so much. I know this video is gonna be super long. It's gonna take so long to edit. And frankly, I just, I just wanna skate. I don't wanna have to think about the camera. But there is one more trick I wanna film on this board. Cause I said yesterday, we also have this nice tall block here, very solid space, which is good for landing on if you're doing truck tricks. I am obviously not a pogo guy, but I have precisely one pogo trick. That I learned in 2004 and it's not great. I'm aware of that. But for the sake of completeness, for the sake of full testing the setup, I'm gonna have to do it. Can't believe I'm willing to film myself doing a pogo right now, but yeah. Well, it wasn't pretty, but it worked. There you go, Paris trucks, they're great for pogos. We're done, cool. Ah, so, this is it. This is the end, we're finally here. It has been a long video, and I apologize for that. But I hope you found this interesting, entertaining, informative, whatever. Uh, I thought it might be valuable to show you the elements of a setup and show you how something that is so radically different from what I normally skate, you know, how, how that changes my skating and the things that it benefits. And honestly, I like this board. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I was right. I hate these wheels, really hate them. I like things with grip. Sliding around everywhere is not a fun time and I stacked it on a couple of occasions because of them. You can't really push into things when you've got hard wheels because they just break free too easy. They're also really noisy, really, really noisy. But tall trucks, good. Paris trucks, really nice. The, um, the Cairo K-backs, really good. They actually turn, you know, quite well. They're firm, but they turn. Um, synopsis bearings, they do exactly what I, I know they do. They, they roll smooth, they roll fast, very happy. But the deck, the deck is the star of this show. This is, I mean, you know, admittedly, I am biased, I'm aware of this. I ride for moonshine, I designed this board. But as far as I'm concerned, if you are skating single kicks and you want a smaller single kick, there is nothing out there better than this right now. There isn't, and trust me, I've, I've tried them. Um, it just in terms of shape, this is great. This is a modern take on an 80s design and it really does work. So if you've been paying $100 or whatever for a Mullen reissue, a chessboard, or if you're thinking about getting a Wellinder, don't. Spend half as much money and get a board that actually works. It skates really nicely. Now, the question for me now is, do I keep these wheels on and keep it as a 360 setup and just try spinning all, winters, all winter long? Or do I put some 95A focus on and really go to town with it? Ah, uh, decisions. But anyway, I'm gonna go for a skate. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, you know, click the thing down there, tell other people, blah, blah, etc. Normal service, by which I mean trick tips, will be resumed when it stops raining for more than two hours. Because, yeah. Hopefully we'll be all right tomorrow. I'm gonna do trick tips then. But for now, catch you in a bit. Have a good one.